Welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast, sponsored by Violet Defense. Violet Defense is dedicated to protecting our world from germs by bringing the power of UV disinfection to everyday spaces. Their patented technology enables them to harness the power of the sun to incorporate ultraviolet light into products and environments like never before. Whether you're ready to implement existing products or if you'd like to explore researching and developing a custom deployment of their technology for your school, Violet Defense has the solutions and the experience you need. Thanks again to Violet Defense for sponsoring the Educational AD Podcast and go to their website at www.violetdefense.com. I also want to thank Sideline Interactive uh, for being a podcast sponsor. We actually have a Sideline Interactive video scoring table in our gym, and it is fantastic. So I really encourage you to check them out. It's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days. But Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your students. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832 786-0302 786-0302 to schedule a live web demo to see their tables and boards in action and see what these fantastic products can do for you. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. We also want to thank Wall of Fame by Vital Signs. Wall of Fame by Vital Science has a mission to bring your school's legacy to life. We provide a variety of interactive touchscreen options and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments, visit www.vitalsignswalloffame.com or to learn more and get started on your digital Wall of Fame tribute, call us at 614-981-3589 or email us at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. That's sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Finally, we want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your athletic program. Athletic surveys by Lifetrack also gives the 95% of the players and parents who really love your program a voice and helps demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out our testimonials and then call 1-800-738-6466 or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. We also want to acknowledge uh, Varsity Brands including BSN Sports, Varsity Spirit, and Herb Jones, along with Hometown Ticketing, simple and easy online ticketing for their support of the Educational AD Podcast. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Educational AD Podcast. We've got a really cool guest today, Greg Nelson. He's the Senior Vice President at Huddle. Uh, He's in charge of uh, sales and marketing, uh, he's also involved in the creative end, and uh, looking at his bio, I see he still has time to coach a little bit of football on the side. So, uh, Greg, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Jake. Very excited. And yeah, we're excited to have you on, and um, you know, share with our listeners, uh, you know, your story along with uh, some cool things that are going on at Huddle. But let's go and get started. We always like to let our listeners have a chance to get to know our guests. So. Give us the, uh, uh, the quick bio, where you were born, where you grew up and went to school, and, and how your path has led you to uh, where you're currently uh, at Huddle. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I grew up in a small town in South Dakota, uh, just north of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and I ended up coming down to Nebraska and Lincoln to go to school. So I went to the University of Nebraska, 
And uh, one of my side jobs was that I was a student manager on the football team, uh, which is a checkered Eric part of the Huskers past a little bit. Uh, I was there for Bill Callahan's last two years and Bo Pelini's first year. So it was fun to see a, just a diverse approach to the game and, and just really get to expand my horizons a little bit. But it really kind of sparked a passion in me for coaching and working with athletes. Uh, being a student manager wasn't all it's cracked up to be. You get to do some of that stuff, but you also have to like wash cars and set up the equipment and all, you know, all, all the real fun stuff to kind of earn your stripes. So it was, uh, it was one of those things where I knew I wanted to be involved in coaching. I knew I wanted to be involved in athletics. And then uh, when I graduated, I found uh, Huddle and Huddle's really just getting started during my time at Nebraska. The, Nebraska was our first kind of beta tester and first customer in terms of the video analysis tools that we have now. And so uh, they were hiring for a support person at the time. I jumped on board as our 16th employee. Uh, we had about 200 teams at the time. So real small crew, uh, just trying to figure out how to grow. And we went that very first year from about 200 teams to 2000. The next year we went from 2000 to 5000. And the next year we went from 5000 to 10,000. So it was a whirlwind of growth and everybody wearing a lot of different hats. So I had to work not only on the support side, but I had to test the product and do some quality assurance. I had to uh, work in sales like everybody did. Everybody's got to go to clinics on the weekends and talk to coaches and all that kind of stuff. And so uh, it was a blast just being a part of that startup journey. Uh, but as we continue to grow, uh, I had a passion to get towards the product side. And so I actually became Huddle's second product manager, working on a lot of our tools that are focused on American football coaches. So things like our playbook tools or our recruiting tools or our Huddle sideline product or Huddle assist. So I got to bring a lot of new products to market for football coaches that help make their lives easier. Uh, and then that helped me in my, uh, what I call is, is not a very great paying side hustle uh, where I get to coach football. Um, it's, it's a passion project for me, obviously, but uh, it's really fun to not only be on the team helping create some of these awesome products and features, but also be the user who is getting up at 6 a.m. and uh, breaking down video or staying up late on a Friday night uh, recording the game. So uh, it's it's fun to kind of be able to play both sides. I, I'm obviously get to give plenty of feedback to our product team. If, if something's broke, I know exactly where to go to fix it. Uh, but uh, it's it's been a, an awesome part of the journey. And now I'm in my current role. Uh, as general manager over the, the competitive business unit, which is the high school, the small college and the club space. And so uh, we obviously are continuing to build products for coaches that help teams and athletes win. And, and that, that's our mission. You know, it, it's got to be cool to be in, in your position. Uh, I'm going to guess there's probably a couple of other people in the organization that were there kind of at the beginning and have been able to see the, the company grow and, and the products grow. And having been in the number of, uh, let's say, divisions that you've uh, served in, it's got to help when you're talking to somebody uh, in that department. You know, maybe you know, hey, I I feel your pain. I've been there. Uh, how does that work out for you? Uh, you know, having a global picture, but at the same time being able to, uh, you know, check in at a, a laser focus level. Yeah, I think that's something that Huddle really values across the company is we always want to be understanding our users as best we can. Uh, we actually require pretty much everybody at the company to take support calls. So uh, if you're an engineer and you take a support call on something that you built that's broke, uh, you're much more likely to get out there and fix it as fast as you can, right? Uh, but we want everybody to be super close to the customer. And so that's been true since we were 16 people all the way up to thousands of people that we are right now. And so we always want to just stay really tight with our users, understand their pain points and solve their problems. And everything we do at huddle is built around just helping our coaches well very very cool and again uh, as I, I mentioned during our uh, uh pre-podcast discussion uh, i actually got to use huddle as a head football coach for a few years before i took off my uh coach's hat and uh, became a full-time ad very cool product uh some really neat things for our listeners we are visiting with greg nelson senior vice president at huddle we're going to hear some more about some of the new things that Huddle's doing right now, but let's go and take a quick break and hear from one of our podcast sponsors, Sideline Interactive. We want to thank Sideline Interactive for their support of the podcast. And um, as an athletic director, we actually have a Sideline Interactive video score table in our gym. Very cool product. You know, it's becoming harder and harder to fund an athletic department these days, but Sideline Interactive's indoor scoring tables and video boards can generate $10,000 or more every year while also creating excitement in the gym and the ultimate game day experience for your athletes. Go to sidelineinteractive.com or call 832-786-0302 to schedule a live web demo 
and see their tables and boards in action and find out what these fantastic products can do for you. You can also email them at sales at sidelineinteractive.com. That's sales at sidelineinteractive.com. Welcome back, everyone. We're visiting with Greg Nelson, Senior Vice President at Huddle. Greg, in our profession, we always talk about the importance of leadership, particularly mentorship. And I ask our guests, who are some of your mentors that you've had? Maybe family members growing up or teachers or coaches or maybe people that you've worked with. Uh, obviously, we, we, we don't get where we're at by ourselves. So who helped you get where you're at now? Yeah, I think for me, uh, that all starts with my parents. Uh, I have a really strong work ethic and it's really driven by them. Both my parents just real blue collar workers and uh, did, a, did a ton to provide for me and my brother. And that kind of really set the standard for, for what I wanted to do in life and where I wanted to go. And so uh, they, they really set a good example for me. And as I've grown and, and gotten to the coaching profession and things like that, just being able to learn from some of the awesome coaches that are out there, whether it was at Nebraska or uh, my first coaching job was as a sophomore coach for the for Lincoln East, a football team school here in town. And so I uh, just learned so much. I had so much energy and wanted to get after it so bad. But uh, Coach Gingery, he pointed me in the right direction and made sure that uh, uh, my energy and enthusiasm was kind of used in the right way because you're just not you're always not sure what to do uh, as a young coach, but gave me the room to uh, try things, make mistakes, and then give me advice on on what I needed to fix and, and improve. So that's that's been true of a ton of different people at Huddle here too. I've I've been blessed to work with uh, some of our founders and some of our our just top people here um, uh, in my time in all my different roles. And so I've learned something from each one of them, uh, whether it's John Words, our chief product officer, or Matt Mueller, our COO. Uh, both of them have been great leaders for me uh, in my time at Huddle. Yeah, I love that, you know, the energy and the enthusiasm, whether it's, you know, you're a head coach or a new AD or a new vice president, you know, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And, and so you need those mentors there to uh, help guide you, you know, very, very cool. Uh, Mar or Greg, I, I know our listeners uh, probably have a couple of football coaches involved. And as an AD, I know that Huddle is not just football, but um, can you share some of the, the latest things that are, are happening with Huddle? I know the Huddle Focus is brand new. We actually had one in our gymnasium, and uh, again, our coaches love it. Uh, it's great, but you know, what's going on? What's the cutting edge technology right now uh, with Huddle? Yeah, so for us, everything really starts with capture. If we can't get your video into Huddle, you don't have an opportunity to coach your athletes, to scout other opponents and things like that. And so we've been investing a ton in trying to automate the capture process for coaches of every sport, not just football to your point. And so a couple of years ago, uh, we rolled out our huddle focus camera for indoor sports, which captures basketball, volleyball, wrestling, all the things that you would normally see in a gym. And this year for the first time, we're excited to roll out focus outdoor, which obviously gets installed in the stadium, can capture soccer, lacrosse, American football, uh, all of those sports. And it's been fun to see how much overhead we're really able to take off of a coach's plate from having to get a camera and get it set up to find a parent or volunteer to film There's to, to uploading it at the end of the game. It's so much managing an SD card or managing a tripod. And that's, that's not why you get into coaching, right? It's not what you're doing. It's not, it's not what you uh, do. You want to help athletes. You want to help uh, win games. And so we try to take everything off the coach's plate. That's, that isn't specifically coaching and improving your team. You know, you talk about, uh, you know, the uploading component. I still remember uh, my last year as a head football coach, 2014, uh, after the game, taking that video that a parent had shot, uh, sometimes not on a great camera, and then uploading it through the old uh, process. You know, I'd be getting home after watching it myself, you know, probably about three in the morning. So, yeah, very, very cool stuff. Uh, we're going to uh, do this at the end of the podcast, but for our listeners, if they want to find out more information about Huddle, Huddle Focus, and all the things that Huddle can do for them, what's the best way for them to get in touch with, you know, not necessarily you, but get in touch with Huddle? We have a ton of different phone numbers or emails that you can reach out to. Sales at Huddle.com is a great one if you just want to learn more about the different product offerings that we have and how we can help your sport. Uh, if you're already a Huddle customer and you run into issues, we have an awesome support team based here in Lincoln, Nebraska that is always on the other end of the line ready to answer your phone calls. But support at Huddle.com is another easy one to to just get a hold of us. Uh, or I'm always happy for people to email me. Uh, I've been here for 
uh, 12 years, like I said, in a bunch of different roles. So chances are I, I might have I might have been doing what you were trying to get done. I'm always happy to, to jump in with people. So uh, there's we're that's the best part about Huddle. Like I said, I think we're very willing and excited to be interacting and engaging with customers, wherever that is, whether it's an email, phone, Twitter, wherever. Um, but we think there's a ton of opportunities out there to continue helping coaches. And so we know our job's far from done on that front. And for our listeners, once again, we're visiting with Greg Nelson, Senior Vice President at Huddle. We're going to come back and hear some more, but let's take another break and hear from Vital Signs Wall of Fame. We also want to thank Vital Signs Wall of Fame for supporting the Educational AD Podcast. Wall of Fame by Vital Signs has a mission. They want to bring your school's legacy to life, and they provide a variety of interactive touchscreen options and an extensive library of templates to make it easier than ever to recognize the athletic achievements of your students, both past and present. For ideas on how to showcase your school's diverse history and your proudest moments, visit www.vitalsignswalloffame.com. Or to learn more and get started with your own digital Wall of Fame tribute, call them at 614-981-3589 or email them at sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. The FIAAA actually has a Vital Signs Wall of Fame for our Florida Hall of Fame, and it is a really cool device. Uh, please check them out. Sales at vitalsignswalloffame.com. Again, we're visiting with Greg Nelson, Senior Vice President at Huddle. Greg, you mentioned that, you know, the Huddle Focus camera uh, for outdoors is brand new this year. Um, what are some benefits uh, for coaches and ADs? You talked a little bit about it, but let's take a deeper dive. What are some benefits of the Huddle Focus? And let's maybe talk about uh, live streaming and how schools can monetize uh, these programs. What can you share with us? Yeah, absolutely. So like I said, we always start with how can we take work off of the coach's plate. And so anything we can do to automate the capture of their game video or their practice video is what we want to lean into. And so focus really handles that for us. There's a mounted camera in your stadium or in your gym. And all you have to do is pull out your phone, hit record, uh, and it starts recording for you, uploads automatically into your huddle account. And it's there for you to review during practice or at the end of practice or at the end of the game. And so that, that capture process is super simple and automated uh, for you, which really if you think about it, accelerates your own coaching process, because when you walk off the field now, you're not having to upload video or take time to, to get everything how you want it in your library. It's just there and you can pull the athletes in for a post-practice film session or a post-game film session or whatever you'd want, which means they're improving faster, they're learning quicker. Uh, and that's, that's just a huge part of, of the coaching process. And so that's that's the main the main benefit. From a streaming perspective, you mentioned it, we really want to put the control in the hands of the schools to decide how best to monetize their live streaming content. There's some schools out there that just want to throw a link up on YouTube and say, hey, if you can't be at the game, pull it up on YouTube and you can watch our JV play or a varsity play or whoever it is. Uh, we also see some schools that maybe they want to monetize the whole thing and they want to put it behind a paywall and, and charge for each game or charge for an entire season and use it as a fundraiser. And so we have tools that allow them to put it on any destination that they want uh, and they can put up a paywall and monetize that however they'd like. Uh, and then we also have tools that allow you to plug the stream into any sort of broadcast software that's out there. So think about being able to put voiceovers on it or other score bugs and information or put sponsor ads on top of it. Uh, you can do all of that stuff through the stream that the focus camera provides. And so we really try to enable you to be the decider on how exactly you want to get the stream out there, how you want to monetize it. Uh, and so each school can kind of pick their own way through. Uh, but at the core of it is you don't have to worry about finding somebody to film. You don't have to worry about a good, high quality piece of content. Uh, you can worry about all the other fun stuff that, that goes on top of it. And again, for somebody who's brand new to Huddle that might be listening now, uh, they can see all of this on the Huddle website. And there's people they can get in touch with to uh, explain how they can get started at their school, right? Yeah, absolutely. We have, we have ideas on how to connect with your community better around streaming. Uh, we have a ton of content on online about, you know, just how to make streaming really valuable for your school. You know, Greg, one of the things we try to do with the podcast is this idea of sharing best practices. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Um, what are some best practices that you've seen, maybe even at your own school, 
with programs that have utilized Huddle in, in really you know unique and, and effective ways. Yeah, so uh, I, I probably sound like a broken record, but it really starts with with capturing video. If, you, if you're not filming practices or, or games, uh, it's all you're, you're doing a disservice to your athletes. You're, you're not taking every opportunity to help them improve, and so that's that's obviously number one for us. Is you have to be recording, whether it's with a focus camera or not. We'd obviously love it to be with one, but uh, you got to be able to capture that video of that practice or that game. And so um, that's the first step. The second step is really about being specific with what you watch with athletes. I find that a lot of times a coach might just sit down. Uh, with the remote and, you know, fast forward or rewind and watch just the, the game all the way straight through. We really find it's best if you're very specific with the athlete. So pull out a set or a drive or a series of plays that you ran and be specific with them about what you were trying to accomplish there, why it worked or why it didn't work, and then how can they improve next time. And it, their retention is so much higher when you're specific with the intent of, you know, here's what we want to improve. Um, which does take a little bit more work from a coaching side. I often try to recommend that people create a narrative uh, with what they're watching. So if our three keys to victory this week from a football coach perspective are physicality and tackling, perimeter blocking, and then ball security, I'm going to pull up three clips of, of us being really physical on tackling uh, in the past. I'm going to pull up three clips of us doing a great job of perimeter blocking. I'm going to pull up three clips where maybe we weren't as secure with the ball as we could have. And then hopefully those athletes walk out of that room with, Hey, these are the three things we got to focus on this week. Here are very concrete examples of how I can improve. And so that's really my recommendation. Uh, the other piece I always like to throw out is let the kids dive in too. Uh, you don't need to guard the film review process. The, the kids will love watching video. They like marking highlights, uh, obviously, but you can send them a task that says, Hey, pull three clips of the last of the plays that you were in for the last game that you would like to improve. Tell me what you did wrong and what you would do better here. Uh, and it really engages them in the coaching and the teaching process. So it's not all just you uh, droning on with them about areas to improve. It's them finding areas and talking with you. And you can kind of identify, okay, is my athlete learning? Are they uh, hungry to improve or, or did they not take the exercise seriously? And what did they do? So those are, those are my, some of my tips for just how to, how to maximize a coaching session. I think you and I would uh, get along very well on a football staff. Uh, you know, those last couple of years I coached and had huddle, uh, that's exactly what I did. You know, our goal was to come in on Monday and be in and out of video in 45 minutes and get out on the field and do some walkthroughs and do some things that we had just talked about. And so having those plays tagged, those key plays to illustrate instead of grinding through a two and a half hour video session, you know, uh, which was how they did it back in my day, 100 years ago, uh, really, really appealed to me. And, you know, sending those plays out to the kids, uh, you know, hey, I want you to watch these six plays. And yeah. just great, great advice. Um, as long as we're on this topic, um, do we know what's uh, around the corner? What's uh, coming up next for Huddle? What's going to be the next big thing? Yeah, so uh, sticking with the theme of the theme of the day, it seems like so far, obviously capture is a huge part of it. And we know that not every game is played in a stadium with a press box where we can mount a camera to, or not every game is played in the gym. Uh, and so we are in the process of releasing our Focus Flex camera, which is a portable automated capture camera. The goal being you have it on a tripod, you can take it to a game, you set it up, you can capture the game, whether it's on a soccer pitch or a lacrosse field or wherever it is, uh, you can capture the game, pull it down and it's uploading live to Huddle, still allowing you to live stream. Uh, and then again, that content flowing into Huddle so you can use it with your athletes. So our goal is that anywhere a game is gonna be played, there's a Huddle camera there, you're capturing it and you're gonna get value out of it. Uh, the other things that, that are kind of new for us is, like I said, anything that we can do to accelerate that coaching process, obviously taking capture off the plate of a coach is a, is a huge step, but anything we can do to kind of automate the breakdowns that they're doing or uh, accelerate the stat turnarounds that they're getting. It helps them understand, okay, these are the three clips that I need. Uh, and maybe in the future, we're even recommending, hey, these are the three clips that you need to, you need to show your team so you can improve. Uh, not to take the, take the ball out of the coach's hands by any means, but again, to help them not to have to stay up till 10, 11, 12 at night, breaking down video, finding the right clips to watch the next day and preparing for practice. They can just interact with their athletes, build relationships, and then help them master those techniques. So anything that we can do on that front, uh, we're gonna keep pushing down that path. Uh, that's that's exciting. Looking forward to seeing those things come to fruition for uh, ADs and football coaches. For our listeners, we're visiting with Greg Nelson, Senior Vice President at Huddle. Uh, we're going to be back in a minute to uh, hear Greg's toolbox suggestions for the Athletic Surveys uh, Athletic Director Toolbox. Uh, please stay with us. 
We want to thank Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack for sponsoring the Athletic Director's Toolbox segment of our podcast. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack are a quick, easy, and affordable way to collect comprehensive data that allows you to evaluate and improve your athletic program. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack also gives the 95% of the players and parents who love your program a voice and helps demonstrate the importance that a positive athletic experience has for them. Go to athleticsurveys.com and check out their testimonials and then call them at 1-800-738-6466 or email them at info at athleticsurveys.com to get started. Athletic Surveys by Lifetrack. Let them help you take your athletic program from good to great. Well, Greg, this has been really cool uh, connecting with you and hearing all the cool things that uh, are going on at Huddle, but we're not done yet. Uh, we always like to wrap up with the Athletic Surveys Athletic Director's Toolbox. You know, you certainly know your way around an athletic program, but uh, right now I'm going to task you with sending out a brand new athletic director on their very first job, but I'm only going to let you put three things in their toolbox. What three items are going to go in Greg Nelson's athletic director toolbox? Yeah, uh, I'm going to start obviously biased, but I would say huddle needs to be in that toolbox. Number one, uh, if you're, if your coaches are not recording their practices and reporting their games and evaluating with their athletes, you're just not going to be able to maximize their athletic performance. And you're also not going to be able to maximize their recruiting journey, which is becoming more and more an important part of every coach's responsibility with their team. So that's, that's, that's number one. Uh, number two is find ways to engage with your community that, that are new, unique, and interesting. Uh, I think social media is one of those ways. And then finding talented people inside who can help you engage with those communities better. Uh, for example, this year we had a former student who was really into graphic design. He's creating graphics for every game that we have. You know, they took a, it takes five minutes to take a photo shoot with your seniors. You can pull out your phone and snap some pictures of them in their jerseys. And then it's awesome to see what uh, those people with those skills can do. And they can put them on awesome game day graphics or scores or things like that. It creates just an awesome sense of community and community pride. Uh, and so I'd highly recommend finding ways to do that. And then the third piece would be find ways to leverage your internal team, whether it's students, uh, other coaches or teachers. Uh, when I talked about things like broadcasting, there's so many opportunities to engage athletes who might want a career in broadcasting and, and need a place to experiment. And so you can put them uh, with a coach, you know, on a broadcasting team to be able to live stream your games and Again, you connect with your community a little bit more, but you also create that internal sense of pride in the athletic programs that I think are really important because it's not just about the athletes who play sports. It's about every athlete at the school that needs to be engaged and excited and have some school pride. And so that's that's one way to do it. Uh, the other way to do it is just by recognizing all the awesome accompl accomplishments that happen uh, in your athletic programs, whether that is, uh, you know, hitting a new weight lifting PR or somebody breaking a school record from a passing touchdown standpoint, like those kind of things are very important to recognize because again, they build pride to help people understand that their hard work is recognized and they set the bar for all the lower athletes, right? So if I'm a seventh or eighth grade athlete and I see uh, this kid lifted so much weight, you know, they squatted X, uh, I might set the goal of I'm going to beat that by the time I'm a senior and you've given them something to shoot for uh, and they become more bought in in your program. So uh, those, those would be, uh, the things that I would put in their toolbox. Obviously, uh, being an AD is a really tough job and you have a ton of different stakeholders, not just coaches and athletes, but parents, board members, administration. Uh, and so at a lot of times it can feel like you're trying to, trying to please everybody and, and not, and not accomplishing much. But, um, I think finding ways to celebrate athletes, finding ways to enable your coaches to do their job. Uh, that's the best part of being an AD is you get to be an enabler for everybody. Uh, and while you're not the one necessarily holding up the trophy at the end of the season, you know that you played a really important role uh, uh, to get get your teams there. So it's huge. Really, uh, really cool ideas. And again, I, I identify with you know, your last one about the getting the students involved. Um, long story short, we've we've had at our school a student public address announcer uh, for our games. And the kids that have done it for us, there's been a couple, they've just been phenomenal. And they, they literally have turned themselves into uh, unpaid uh, sports information directors. Uh, it's just an area that I didn't have to worry about at all because I knew these uh, students were just going to knock it out of the park. Uh, 
Um, Greg, great, great stuff. Once again, if uh, someone wants to find out more about Huddle or maybe even pick your brain a little bit, uh, what's the best way that they can go about getting in touch with you guys? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Greg J. Nelson, or you can email me at greg.nelson at huddle.com. Always happy to chat. Uh, it's football season in the fall, so obviously life's a little crazy right now between Huddle and and then getting to practice at, at nights, but uh, always happy to chat uh, and help people figure out how to utilize Huddle better. Okay. And again, the Huddle website is out there um, for those of you that want to take a deeper dive into that product. And as a um, coach who used it and as an athletic director that had a Huddle Focus camera in our gym, I strongly recommend that you check it out. Uh, Greg Nelson, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Thanks so much for having me, Jake. It was a blast. For our listeners, remember the Zoom recordings of these interviews are being uploaded to the Educational AD Podcast YouTube channel. Uh, we appreciate you listening. Come back again next time for another episode of the Educational AD Podcast.